You're listening to Biz Quick. This is where Julie and Corey provide quick and useful information to small business owners. Biz Quick is the podcast where small business owners get to showcase their businesses and receive expert advice and guidance in areas many entrepreneurs struggle with. And you, the listener, get solutions, tips, and tricks on real world topics that many small business owners face. Julie and Corey are the experts small businesses hire when they need solutions. And the BizQuick podcast is just one way they deliver those solutions. Let's start the show. Hello and welcome to BizQuick. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And on today's show, we've got Emmanuel Kamau. He is uh, out of Raleigh, North Carolina. He's got the company. His company is Grow Your uh, Medical Practice, and he helps businesses uh, get effective paid marketing to grow their business. Yeah. He's an, he's a unique and very interesting individual. We've had a couple of calls with him, just networking calls and he's a, he's a sharp guy. So I'm looking forward to the conversation with him and, um, learning more for ourselves about paid, paid ads, which we just started recently running for the first time. That is correct. We did just start running them and there's a, uh, there's a bunch of, um, Things that seem easy that aren't, and a lot of things that seem hard that are actually pretty easy um, when it comes to paid marketing. So it's one of those things where, like, for me, I've I've never really done, I mean, we've dabbled before, mm-hmm. and, and I mean, in previous businesses I have, but I haven't done it effectively, and especially over the past year, like, all the conversations we've had with people, we've learned that if you don't do it effectively, you're just throwing your money away. And so for me, I'm just kind of like, well, if if I wanted to throw money away, I can think of a lot of more fun things to do than just marketing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, um, I agree. I I tend to, in my head, and I know this is going to be a surprise to you, Corey, I might overcomplicate things, right? Correct. Yes. So the thought of, you know, just marketing in general can sometimes be very overwhelming because there is so much to it. Um, and it's nice to have conversations with people who are experts in it and experts at breaking things down and simplifying them so it's easier to understand. So, you know, we're working with some people right now um, that are helping us with our paid ads. And it's it's not Emmanuel, but that's because he is he focuses on you know, medical practices, chiropractors, dentists, things of that nature. And we are not those things. We know those kinds of people, but we're not, that's not our business. So we went with somebody else and they actually made it really easy for us as well to get the ads up and running very quickly. And um, I'll be very interested to see over the course of time how those ads help us. Yeah. And that's definitely one piece of advice that I would give to anybody out there. If you're thinking about running ads is to find somebody to do it for you, just like you'd find a specialist to do most anything's for you, whether it's, uh, you know, fixing your car or, you know, uh, installing a new light in your house, whatever it is. Um, the, the paid marketing, again, like I said, you're just throwing your money away if you're not doing it well. So it's worth the, the investment and it's not expensive because mm-hmm. for them, like, I mean, especially for simple, marketing campaigns it's it's no no work at all for them you just give them the content they create the ad they probably hit a button and it goes to everywhere that they want it to go because i'm (laughs) sure that the processes and everything on their end are super easy and super simple so all they're doing is just acting as that middleman which middleman gets a bad connotation but in this instance it's not because they've got all of the tools that you don't have that we don't have and it's just all right here take my money make more money. Yeah, they're they're experts and it's, you know, and it's one of those instances where it makes sense to rely on experts. I know when we first started the podcast, um we had on a guest who talked to us about, you know, what you should set aside for your paid budgets and I'm so embarrassed that I write Lisa Cutter. I was like, god, who was it? Lisa Cutter from Amp Up My Biz talked to us about, you know, running paid ads and and she talked about the budget and if you really wanted something, if you wanted to get see effective and meaningful gains that you needed to be able to spend at least $500 a month, I believe was the number that she gave. I'll be curious to see what, um, to hear Emmanuel's thoughts on that. If he's, if he thinks that that's a good number, if he thinks you need to go higher, or if it's really just conditional based on what your business is and what it is that you're trying, trying to achieve, right? Cause paid ads, you can be looking to do two things. One, sell things, 
Um, you could be looking to grow your email list. You could be looking for brand brand awareness, right? Getting your 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 business name and and what you do in front of more eyes. Not necessarily selling anything, but maybe just trying to collect emails through like a lead magnet or something like that. So there's a lot of different ways to use paid ads, and I'm just um you know we're just really starting to explore the different ways that we can use it for SB Pays. Yeah, and it's another funny thing that I'm kind of learning as we go, or interesting thing rather, is that how, like, we're running Instagram and Google ads right mm-hmm. now, and I just kind of always viewed Google ads or, you know, Google's, like, when I say, you know, you're just throwing your money away, where you're just like, okay, here, here's 500 bucks, and Google's like, cool, I'll take your money, see you later, but they actually do kind of work for you in the sense that you submit the ad and you kind of place where you think it should go and then as people click on it view like as they interact with that ad google will start to retarget similar people who have a similar like a similar demographic interests whatever it is um and i mean when you think about it it makes sense because google wants you to be effective that way you'll spend more money with yes. them <laughs> um, they're not just stealing your money even though they're stealing your data <laughs> different podcast, Corey, different <laughs> podcast, though we should do one on that. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. And the other thing too, um, we've been working um, pretty consistently over the last six months to improve our SEO, right? So we have an SEO team that we work with. And when you're running Google ads um, and you know that you've been working hard on the SEO, they sort of pair really nicely together because now you're you're sort of getting that double focus on on who you want for your target audience. Yeah. Um, but I think we have to uh, take a break now because Emmanuel is waiting on us. So we will uh, take a quick break and bring Emmanuel on and we're going to get into, uh, we'll bring an expert on and probably prove us everything wrong that we just said. Oh yeah. This could be embarrassing for us, but I'm, I'm up for it. How about you? I am. Let's do it. All right. Hey everyone. If you're like most entrepreneurs out there, time is not something you ever seem to have enough of. We get it. There are a million things that need your attention, both in business and in your personal life. That's why we created Time Bomb. This is a self-paced course designed to help you determine what your time is worth and where you should be spending those precious hours every day. Right now, we have an option to buy the bundle, which also includes products designed to help you become more efficient with your time. It's a $70 deal you're getting for only an additional $30. Head on over to sbpace.com to learn more. Time Bomb. Take control of your calendar. Gain control of your life. All right, and welcome back to the show. We've got Emmanuel on, and he is from Grow Your, his business is Grow Your Medical Practice, um, and we are happy to have him here today. Welcome to the show, Emmanuel. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. I'm excited, excited. Yeah, so our listeners might recognize, we talked about you on our um, Entrepreneurial Traits podcast. You've got, we referenced you a few times. Um, You were sort of the impetus for having that conversation because we we just started talking about you we enjoyed that conversation so much so we're going to start with um what might be the most challenging question you get today from us emmanuel what's the (laughs) hardest thing you've been through in your business hardest thing that i've been through in my business to date um at first was trying to prove the point that my services can work for people um so in the beginning you know, with growing medical practice, as I've worked with other different types of niches of uh, businesses, I focused on the medical side, just because dentists, I I know how dentists think, especially from my packing braces and knowing the people who did it. Um, but a lot of them, they've been burned in the past. And so they had a negative, uh, they had a negative view on advertising. But when you really dive deep into it, the ads is a very small part of the problem where at the end of the day, what is your landing page? What's your follow-up? So a lot of them kind of had a negative view on marketing just because they had a you know negative experience. But if you really break it down, the ads were not the problem, but there's so much more that was behind the scenes. So why did you pick uh, the medical field, specifically dentistry? Like I, it's, uh, I'm familiar with it. My brother's a dentist and, and they're definitely they need a lot of help when it comes to business. Um, but, <laughs> a lot of help. <laughs> but, you know, what What got you into uh, picking that as your, your niche? So I worked with, you know, 
local mom and pops to car dealerships and YMCA's. And the, the dentistry niche came to me when my actual dentist was um, part of our local you know, area. And he kind of heard about me and said, hey, have you ever worked with a dentist? This is a couple of years ago. I said, no, but I love a challenge. And so um, started helping him. Uh, so it's his wife. His wife is the dental, uh, the dentist, and then he's the business consultant. And then over the years, um, of course, with them being my personal dentist, we've grown a phenomenal relationship. I look at them like our aunt and uncle, and everyone in their practice were really close. And then one of the days, he just invited me out, and we just kind of talked over some drinks in in their in their building. And he just kind of said, you know, my wife hates business and marketing. And I'm like, that's a that's, that's a weird thing. Like, why is that? He said, well, she's an artist. And I was like, okay, tell me more. And he said, um, she just wants to operate on the teeth, but she doesn't know anything about business, doesn't know anything about marketing. And he also said, it's the same thing with the, when people go to school, they go to school, there's no business or marketing classes. And when they leave, you have an artist who's running a business. And some of the times if they have that, you know, DMD, you know, that title, they kind of have, have a little bit of ego, so they don't want to let it go. Um, and so me having braces and me kind of understanding how that industry worked, I would go to the practice early before my appointment and just watch how they operated and it was just amazing they didn't operate like a like a like a dentist it was more like a starbucks type thing um so after really getting their good good results for them um he referred me out to someone else locally to thereby east carolina university we were able to do great stuff for them so i just thought to myself okay let's niche down and try to see what's happening because there's a process uh, it's kind of like a rabbit hole kind of like in the matrix like i kept on going deeper and deeper and it's, again, it's not just ads, but there's so much more that can be done in that industry. That's interesting. Um, I, I love the Starbucks analogy because I'm thinking about, you know, my my old dental practice when I lived in Philly. And that's exactly what it was right, like, right? It's like this orchestrated set of processes and movements that everybody in the office is making. Mm -hmm. um, but there are definitely areas where most dentists don't have the skills. And when you, when you think about running a business, they are running a business, but they're not extremely efficient at the business side of being dentists. Yeah. And it, it's amazing, but it doesn't, it's not surprising just how successful dentists can be without any business knowledge or doing anything for their business. I mean, it's, it's one of those industries where, uh, I mean, you open your doors and you have people for whatever reason lined up, I mean, for your practice over other practices. And I don't know if it's a convenience thing. I mean, there's some networking, there's some, some work that go that's involved with opening up a practice and building your practice and networking with other dentists, et cetera. Uh, but what does an engagement with you look like? Because I, I don't know, about anybody else, but like, I, I feel like I would be hard pressed to click on an ad for a dentist. I mm -hmm. uh, like on the internet, like that yeah. seems like a weird, it almost feels like it would like it's desperation or cheap. So how do you avoid the, the, the sort of the look and feel of a dentist who advertises is kind of, you know, like that, almost like that used car salesman, which exactly I hate. Exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's usually the biggest thing. Cause a lot of people, they go two routes. You have the dentist who they want uh, the quantity, right? They don't really care about the quality. They just want as many numbers through the door. There's uh, they call them DSO organizations, but those are the huge big ones. And then there are people who want that um, quality. And so it, it's just understanding at the end of the day, it's, you know, do you want to help more people or do you want to make more money? That's one of the first questions I'll ask, which they, yes, they're the same exact thing. But with that question, if someone says, well, I just want to help more people, that's a better understanding of what it wants to do. Or if someone says, I want to make a ton of money as possible. Um, but really with the advertising, it's just getting as personal as, as possible. The good thing about having those initial offers or when we talk about the value ladder, um, you know, kind of beginning in, that's where you have your, your free cleaning, your, your, for your, your intro new patient specials. Those are good just for people to really see who you are. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's the same way you have that uh, view on dealerships. A lot of people have that view on the dentist and not liking the dentist at all. So when you're really advertising, I see it all the time. People use the generic images that are on, you know, Unsplash or, or Pixel or, you know, those, those websites. But you want to get as personal as possible. And you also want the image or the video to look as organic as possible. So whether it's a patient review, whether it's a picture of you in the chair, um, at the end of the day, it's the content that's really selling it because, you know, that's what people are really going to be able to buy. They're really buying you and coming to you as the doctor. I, am, I love that. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about those 
Um, I think just in, for any organization, doesn't matter what type of business you are, the stock photos are a really bad move. Mm-hmm. And the cartoon teeth. <laughs> yes, yes. That's that's another one is is the whole, a lot of, this. Is, I'm not going to go on a tangent, but you see pages where they just post the memes of like, the, the person missing an eyebrow and person missing this. And it's like, Oh, the first thing that you, uh, you probably notice is the missing teeth. And it's like, yes, those are funny, but like, you know, what else, right? What else are you going to do? Are you posting stuff about the community? That's, that's another thing I always ask the people is, um, then what, I think it was probably from my experience with working with little kids. So I, I always ask these people like, okay, you get the ads, you get your patients in, then what are you doing? And they're like, well, what do you mean? It's like, well, are you working with your community? Are you sponsoring anything in your school? Are you, you know, are you creating some organization? Are you doing something? Because the money is great when you're getting the patients, but at some point you have to keep changing the ads because they're going to get stale. And I'm not saying that referrals are bad, but you want to use the ads to get the patients in, then you grow your own referral database. So my orthodontist, he does a great job um, where he's actually in the top 1% of Invisalign, but he has a Starbucks, like actual Starbucks in his practice. So talking about the whole Starbucks experience. So he has his practice and he bought out the entire side. You go in, you sign in on a computer. So that's one. There's no clipboards, right? Um, they has a, he has an arcade room where he has old school arcade machines, Xbox, PlayStation, a bunch of TVs. And then he has a Starbucks cafe where you don't have to pay for anything, but you can pay whatever that you have. And then every quarter, they choose an organization to donate all of it to. And he, they average around like four to six K donation per, per quarter. Wow. wow, just got some ideas for your brother. Yeah, I know. I, was, I, should, yeah. I would I love been writing those down. But I, was, I, I really hope he puts an arcade in his practice. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> see it. and like t-shirts and, and stuff like that. So he has uh, he has uh, like t-shirts that he has, and he also does really good marketing, especially with the election. You know how people put like little little um, lawns that yeah. or the signs. Yeah. So he kind of did it, you know, with the past president, his slogan. And it was make smiles great again. And he had the red, white, and blue every single place. And it looked like someone was running for office, but it was his practice. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's that's smart. That's very creative. So let's talk a little bit about paid ads, right? So, and if we can go more generic, um, while I'm sure that we have a plethora of dentists and endodontists that listen to our show, at least one, I'm hoping, then, but, but I know we've got, you know, people that are in represent all types of businesses. So as a general rule, what are some best practices for running paid ads? Some best practices for running ads. I'll start from the beginning is what are you trying to do? Are you trying to get more patients? Are you trying just to show, you know, brand awareness? Um, If you're trying to get more new patients, you can use Facebook has their uh, platform in there called lead form where Pretty much, you know, the whole goal for Facebook or any social media platform is to keep you there as long as possible. Mm -hmm. So when you're using their Facebook lead form, those are more conversions. So you're getting name, phone number, email, and then you can also ask any additional questions. So if you're using those, those are great to really get your leads in. But again, everything having a process, you don't want to just have a lead form. You also want to make sure your follow up, there's a slogan, the the money's in the follow up. Mm -hmm. So having that connected to either spreadsheet Um, or a, there's a platform called Zapier. If people are familiar with that, Zapier allows you to chain a bunch of different platforms together. So you can connect your Facebook where every single time somebody fills out their form on Facebook, it will put all their information in a Google sheet and then it will email you or it will text the, the dentist or the person that, Hey, Dr. Dr. Julie, you just got a new lead. So that's if you're trying to go aggressive on that side. Okay. Um, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to pause you because mm-hmm. I have some questions. First off, I really appreciate that you call me Dr. Julie. No one's ever called me that before. And I'd, <laughs> I'd like to implement that going forward, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Second, I want to ask when you are running a paid ad for lead generation, what are you, mm, I'm just going to use the word luring them in with. What are you doing to get them to give you their information. Is it a lead magnet? Is it a discount off services? Is it what, what, what is it? Because, you know, most people aren't just going to willing, well, some people get willingly give up their information, but most people aren't just going to willingly give it up and fill out a form without some sort of incentive. So what's the incentive to get them to fill out the form? And usually, yes. So it is a, if it's a discounted offer, um, it can be a free consultation, 
if you're specializing in implants, people do like a $500 implant offer, um, where a lot of people, they kind of think I'll become that, you know, discount dentist, but it's not an offer that you have to run every single time. So having a front end offer to really get those patient leads in, you can be able to run that offer for a month, pause it. Let's just say you get 30 people, let's just say 50% of that actually convert. Then from those 15 people out of the 30, once you service them, you or once you service them, they leave you a testimonial, whether it's written or video would be best. And then now for the next month, whatever promotion that you're going to do, or if you're just going to advertise in general, you can use those patient testimonials as your marketing content, because there's nothing better than somebody else talking about how good you are. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, so that's usually the strategy. So if you really think about that, um, and of course, growing your referrals. So if you have the whole process inside, you get your you use uh, paid advertising to aggressively go out and get new people. Once they come to your practice, you then grow your referral database to where sometimes you don't even need to run, continue running ads anymore. There's some there's some places where you can run ads all the time, or there's some times where you run ads, get a good amount of patients, and then you can work them to be able to get you more referrals um, and really talk about why you're the best at what you do. So yeah. we already give free consultations, right? Mm -hmm. So what would we, so we can't really incentivize that. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got to give something different. Is it right. a discount on, you know, you know, 10% off of your total package or is it some sort of like, you know, like a lead magnet that gives them tips on how to, how to do something? Like if, if our, if the first call is always free, sometimes the second and the third, mm -hmm. <laughs> then how do you, what, where do you go to next if the consultation is already, already sitting there for free? So Asking that one more time. So you're saying for in your stance or in the in the medical side? Um, I'm, in, in general. So if you're mm -hmm. if the first call is already free, um, and, and that consultation is we don't if somebody doesn't charge for that, how you can't use you can't use that as bait to get people to to sign up to 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 give you their information. So what do you what do you replace it with? So you can replace it with an offer that you have, but a lot of the times uh, some of these practices do. A free consults, but no one actually knows about it. Because what happens is, um, and I'm not veering off from your question, what happens is a lot of people have these beautiful websites that they think that they're beautiful, but at the end of the day, they're not really serving the purpose. A website is to be able to get people to know who you are, what you do, and how they can get in contact with you. So you have some practices where they have uh, you know, websites with 20 different tabs, taking people everywhere, and then on the fifth tab hidden below, that's where they see the free consult. Um, but the, honestly, using that free call, free consult, is a great thing to use because a lot of people do want that second opinion. That's another way you can phrase it, you know, free second opinion of what you already have. Um, just because majority of the people, you, they don't know that you actually offer it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So we've got that down. We've got, that's your step one is getting, you know, running a um, lead magnet or, you know, a free consult or something to collect information and fill out the form. What's mm -hmm. next when you're doing paid ads? So next is the follow-up. When I first started, I would get a bunch of leads for people. And then I'd say, hey, Dr. Julie, how are the leads doing? Uh, wow, the leads are not really good. Uh, you know, only one person has come for their appointment. Okay, how many times have you followed up with them? Oh, our front desk person only followed up once. Okay, how many, you know, so and then I kind of thought to myself, okay, I could either A, get angry or say, wow, well, you guys need to be better or what else can you do? So in the back, having a process to where when someone fills in that lead form, or you know, once they convert, there's a follow-up process where they are getting SMS, uh, so they're getting SMS text messages, emails, voicemails, um, and then also something called a call bridge, uh, a bridge call. So after someone would fill out a form, immediately they would get a text message. You know, thank you, Corey, for filling out your free uh, free consult with Dr. Julie. Uh, one of our team members will be in contact with you soon. The email says the same exact thing but you're getting them on both sides because some people check their emails, some people check their text messages, then there's some people who check both. And then from there, a couple minutes later on, um, if it's during office hours and we tell them, hey, Corey, uh, thank you for filling out Dr. Julie's offer, someone from our office will be in contact with you during office hours. We have a bridge call where the bridge call will call Corey and then it will call the, the doctor and connect. And Dr. Julie will say, call from Corey Harris. Press any button to pick up. So it looks like you're the one calling Corey, but the person already knows. And of course, it's during office hours. It's not like 1 a.m. in the in the middle of the night. Um, and that allows you to really talk to your your patients or your prospects because 
at the end of the day, it's going back to sales. The most important person in the practice, apart from the one generating the leads, is the front desk person and the person on the phone. Because similar to your recent podcast with sales, they are responsible for sales. So I've sent 40 great, great hot leads to someone um, and their front office person was not able to conversate that well on the phone and did not close any. Then I sent 10 to another office. The front office person was amazing, closed all of them. So it just, that also relates. So that's really the, the, the important part. And that follow-up process can be dragged along however necessary uh, it needs to be. If someone does text back or email or call back, then of course they're removed from the campaign. So it's not just hitting them all the time, but you want to have that follow-up process. Um, and if you think about it with boxing, the whole jab, jab, right hook, in the beginning, you can be aggressive of, not necessarily aggressive, but telling people book your appointment, you know, book your appointment. And then you can pull back and start educating them on, hey, here's our practice here is our practice dog i don't know here's what we do here's our here's how we give back to people book your appointment and then tell them the same exact thing mm, okay. that, that's a great piece of advice because i think so many people don't consider the entire process when it comes to marketing they think i'm gonna put this ad out and think you know money's just gonna roll in the front door that mm-hmm. there's a there's a process to everything that you have to follow up you have to nurture you have to do everything once you get somebody's attention, it's not just getting their attention. You know, that's an important part, but yeah. Yeah. And also when they get on the page, these are just some other things. Um, before they even get to the ad, what, what I found is that um, if you have a picture advertisement of like, let's just say your practice or you and your team, if you have your phone number, put a, you know, go to Canva or whatever you need to put a phone number that someone can call or text on the actual graphic, people will call that because there's the, there's the people who, I call it the patient journey. There's the people who fill out their information willingly on Facebook. They don't, you know, they don't think twice, but then there are people who are still skeptical, skeptical. They use Facebook, but they, they're hesitant on doing it. So when you are having your contact information, whether it's a call tracking phone number, which you should track your calls so you can be able to practice those and listen to them with your team, have a number on the actual image that you're using for people to call or text and for them to do that. This actually happened with a practice this in Pasadena where if we put the phone number and said call X number or text this number for your appointment the guy called and it was a $20,000 implant um, implant deal where the guy said on the on the phone call it's a nine minute conversation he's like I don't really like filling out things online but I saw your number so I went ahead and decided to give you a call Mm -hmm. so that's like the, the content side and the short side even with the landing page or your website again and I've even having I've also re edited mine at the end of the day, yes, it's your website, but you're using your website to attract people to buy from you. So it can look great to you, but if it's not serving a purpose for people to opt in or convert, it's useless. So having instead of having the extravagant 20 you know tabs and all this type of website, a very simple one-page website is simple. Home, about, team, services, contact, that's it. Call, call your phone number at the top left or top right, practice at the top left, and then at the bottom, your social media links. But a lot of people think that it has to be beautiful and spruced up and everything, but the simpler it is, the better it is for people to convert because the more complicated steps you put for someone to do, um, the harder it is and they're not going to end up converting. Yeah, you don't want to even remove the friction, not add it during that sales exactly. process. Exactly. Um, what is... Real quick, I want to ask, um, I can, I, I think we need to start wrapping here. This went so fast, but what, what do you recommend for people um, in terms of, or how do you determine ad budget for people when they're, when they're going to, when they're going to run paid ads, how do you determine what they should be spending? Um, depending on how many people that you want to get, usually on a thousand, thousand dollars a month, 1100 right there, um, will get you anywhere from. 20 to 30, 30 leads. But if you want to be aggressive, then you can go 2000. But it, it, people spend it differently. Sometimes you have, you know, you can do your $50 a day. That's about be $1,500. So $50 a day for 30 days, you'll average a couple leads a day. But then there's sometimes if you want to go aggressive, people do $100, $200 a day. So it's all in, in the influx of how many, how many leads and, and what is your process um, of them and how can you be able to handle it? Kind of like what Corey said, it's and we've been talking about the process. You can have the best ads, the best this, the best that. But if your internal processes are not great, you won't be able to succeed. 
And just like that, it all comes back to process. I was Joy. thinking the same thing. As soon as the first time you mentioned process, he smiled and I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> um, can you tell everybody how they can get in touch with you if they want to learn more? Yeah, uh, they can. I think Instagram would be the best place because I have my uh, links on there. Um, Emmanuel G. Kamal. And that is the best place to reach me. Perfect. All right. Great. Well, thank you for being on the show and thank you for the listeners and everything that you need to know about Emmanuel will be in the show notes. Right. And you can connect with us on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You should definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not. That's the most entertaining place we are. Oh, hey, you can also reach us on sbpace.com. That's our website. And according to what I've just learned, it might be a little fancy. <laughs> the right amount of fancy but yeah. <laughs> uh make sure to subscribe to our podcast on whatever platform you're using to listen to this like us and give us a review and if you want to be on the show or if you have any topics that you'd like us to cover uh reach out to us and let us know yeah and did you know we have a book out there it's a number one bestseller on amazon we're pretty darn proud of that because we mention it on every single podcast it is called Seriously Now What? A Small Business Guide to Disaster Preparedness. I know for a fact it's next on Emmanuel's list to read. And it comes with a digital companion workbook, which walks you through all of the many, many exercises that we give you to make your business better. If you've already bought the book and read it, or even read part of it, go give us a review on Amazon. We'll take anything. One star, five star, we don't care. That's it for the podcast. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And this was BizQuick, helping small businesses across America.